$10,000 game. No biggie. I mean, that's got to be at least what it's worth, right? If you make it through to the land, you should be earning at least that. Let's see if Recon can close it out now. I mean, th this is also the worrying factor, right? Momentum is something we talk about often as a good thing for a player. We never talk about it as a bad thing for the player in Momentum. Because if you get thrown off course once, you can completely lose that flow state that you find yourself in this deep. Yeah, for sure you can. Recon with the HRE on the left side in blue. Right side is going to be Garnet with the Delhi in red. We have already had this matchup in game number one. That time around, it is it was Garnet using the HRE against the Delhi of Recon. Failed to work or failed to make the HRE Feudal Age Man at Arms push work. Let's see if Recon can do something similar to that. Let's see if he even goes for it. I mean, if you just try to rush Castle Age, can that work against the Delhi as well? Or do you think the old build is just the worst possible uh, choice against Delhi? I think the question that needs to be answered over here is how do you deal with Tower of Victory Archers? Because I'm fairly certain that this is the time when Garnet is going to go slightly off meta and go for Tower of Victory. He has done that before with the Delhi. That was, I think, against Abbasids. But I'm fairly certain he's going to go Tower of Victory. So the question becomes, how are you going to deal with that with the HRE? You might have slightly better options going into Castle Age because you could possibly think about Manganos against Mass Archers. Mm. Well, let's see. It's actually interesting to think about the idea of Manganels. It used to be that we saw a lot out of the HRE. I still remember the days of Vortex holding his own base and holding back an army due to Manganels alone. But it feels like ever since the nerf where they only work against ranged units, Especially HRE players just don't build them. They're just all about that melee mosh pit and nothing else. But, and, and that's actually the weird part about this new build, isn't it, Lytical? It doesn't even matter if you bring in this new cool feudal spam of men at arms. It's still all about the melee mosh pit. <laughs> it is, but it makes it difficult to snap the scholars. We talk about this a lot. HRE usually don't go for any ranged, so it is difficult to snap down those scholars healing from the back line. Open and wise, we'll see what Recon wants to do. First thing I'm thinking is Ark and Chapel placement, if there's a juicy one. Feels like he didn't get the best opportunity. The deer aren't close enough to push around, but he will at least secure the wood and gold. I don't think he goes to the deer stack as well. Oh, oh, okay. I was about to say, that's like beta days mistakes, right? When a HRE player tries to go for the most value Ark and Chapel and it ends up nowhere near his base. Yeah, that's a pretty decent Ark and Chapel spot, so. Nothing to complain about there for him. I don't think there was any better spots than that. Whoops! Scan out. Got a little too close what, what? for comfort. Kind sir, what, what are you doing in the area right now? Please leave. Take the sheep home. You're going to need them. Hmm. Another thing I'm kind of curious towards is whether like there's an opportunity to kind of go for like pro scouts early on. It's someone I've seen before from a few Delhi players. I think Garnaf and his teammate has done it in the past. And hello, <laughs> it's Tower Victory time! Let's go. Can I be the guy that just says, told ya? It is. Garnath loves this landmark. Right. And it is such an underrated landmark, if you think about that. And especially on Basin, we have seen players putting it to good use. Because at one point, you reach a big ball of archers that's good enough to even meld armored units. It is crazy. It has a massive upside, but it's also risky to go for because you're much more reliant on keeping your scholars alive as they are much pricier. Also, I, I think you mean Tolvia. Get it? Because T-O-V and Tower of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, okay. That's a good fun. Anyway, we're going to see him <laughs> moving out on his stove, which is an interesting choice from Recon. I wonder if this is going to be a 2TC build, because you don't yeah. really want it for the, the arrow slits, right? That's not a common strategy to counter out what Garnaf's going to be doing there. I wouldn't be against. Definitely TC. Yeah, it's definitely C. And if you think about that, if there's a single civilization with which you can go a little bit more aggressive with your second TC, it's probably the HRE. You will have emergency repairs available, so it's much more difficult to punish an aggressive expansion town center. Could be on the hunt. Where else could it be, actually? I think it's hunt on the, on the other side of the tree line, right? Because, yeah. like, if you go too far... Ooh. No, there's no way he walks out into the mid-map with a boar. No, 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 no. We already discussed HRE. Any HRE player does that, like, they want to lose the game. It has to be the deer. He could think about going for a further away deer patch. It would take more time to walk but it would split up his base a little bit more. 
And especially if Garnet goes indeed for the Tower Victory, which he does, he's likely going to be operating with infantry. So he's going to have less mobility, which means he has to choose targets. Is he hitting the main base or is he hitting the expansion town center? So there could be some thought about that for Recon. But where is he going? I, uh, what? No, he, he's actually doing... Oh, no. No way. Uh, uh, no, 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 Recon. It's the boar. No, what, what, uh, it's the boar. It's definitely the boar. Uh, it secures a relic. <laughs> right? Right? It, it does more oh. than that. It takes the central sacred site. This is why it's so big brain. Take a look at how the yeah. sacred sites are distributed on this map. You oh. have one that's oh. guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you gotta be careful. Okay, that's gonna force him to engage. So he won't get the optimal placement next to the outcropping. Oh yeah. my god, God, a few cheeky goose. Yeah, it was expected. Nice pull out there. You gotta be careful with the wheels even, but Pralta's gonna heal them back up. You can still place the TC close to the sacred side. I think Recon has to be happy with that. That's the key thing. Mm -hmm. Because you can't take away one town center from Garn. Oh! Oh! He has Scratch to the that! There's a bigger problem. No, no, it's only a problem if he goes off the prelate. There you go. So he's, it's the only way you can do this. However, Prelate's going to sacrifice his life so the TC can go up. That's a big deal because you can just replace this Prelate now because you're at two TCs, right? As long as the town center goes up. Uh, it should. It's going to be a little tight. Might even end up losing one or two villagers here, but town center is going to go up. Horseman just a little too late to the party. Still painful for Recon, especially because he wasn't on gold. So sure thing, you can build a new Prelate if you can afford it. It's definitely a rough one, but and the other reason why I'm not a big fan is like we, we already talked in an earlier game about the issue with the ball and why I think they chose the worst if to go for it. You buff your gathering rates, they're crazy, but you burn through it straight away. So then what you do in all these villages, and think of the idle time that Recon incurred. Walking out there, building the TC without wheelbarrow as well. This took him so much time. Imagine how quickly he could be in a castle age alternatively um, if he didn't go this far out for a ball play. Yeah. And do keep in mind that on other maps, you could possibly have something else right next to that boar. So you could just send the villagers there. But once this boar is depleted, there's nothing left in the middle to take. So you're going to have to walk back home. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Recon, recon, tap the hammer, tap the hammer. <gasps> okay, I, I feel a little bit cool. wrong if I'm gone enough. I mean, honestly, it looked like the torch damage didn't go through as quickly as the animation there. Spear's <laughs> now coming out as well. So Garnaf won't get to have his cake and eat it here. Horseman will be pushed away. Yeah, this is a difference compared to Recon and Garneth approaching the HRE. When Garneth was using this civilization against the Delhi, he just went full man at arms. Not a single spearman added. And that was exploited by Recon. He went in, he raided, he picked off villagers. Recon is gonna battle that two ways. A, he's gonna have some spearmen out there, but he's also walling himself off here in the corner. So it's gonna be difficult to use the mobility of those horsemen for Garneth. Mm hmm. I'm curious to see like what Recon's next step is going to be. It looks like he's going to the MAA push. The, the idea of this ball, like it, it is going to get him enough food to get them out faster, right? But once it's gone, I do then question what Recon does in that area. Like the reason why people typically move out to these different areas looking for ball value, uh, looking for TC value, right? Is that when you're done with the initial resources, because you haven't got your TCs close together, they spread out, uh, they move out from the initial TC slots, right? So there's less idle time. But there's nothing here other than a stone outcropping. Yeah. Which is and it, which is what makes the boar really tough to utilize when it spawns in the center. Yeah, it makes it very difficult. In fact, the boar on the far right side could have been much more reasonable for him. Obviously, that wouldn't deny the sacred side, and it would even take more time to walk out there. But that just tells you how underwhelming that boar was in the middle. Ooh. Also, look at the resources now. Garnaf has just peeled back entirely. He saw that Recon's yeah. investing in men at arms, so. He's actually now playing Recon at his own game, where he's just going to prioritize a castle age time and get the premium yeah. units instead. Yeah, he's doing a lot of baiting over here. He went for a Tower of Victory, yet decided not to go for a single infantry unit. Just went for a couple of horsemen, and he saw the Tower of Victory being spotted by Recon, so he knew that Recon is going to know that there could be archers coming. Just double down the horsemen for some map control, for some harassment, but what he really is doing behind this is going castle, and I love it. The value could be massive because you could still secure three or so relics for yourself, but bigger thing even are the premium units. 
And, and here's an interesting kind of wrench in the works for Recon. I wonder if originally the racks were meant to be dropped on the proxy base, and then he makes his way towards Garnas base, right? Because it, it cuts the, the runtime in half compared to at home. And because Garnaf pinched him there and had horsemen prowling, Recon's only choice was to actually build the racks at home because he was worried about the economy at the back. Yeah. In, in fact, I'm actually curious because remember yesterday's sets, we had really unskilled trying a French proxy barracks style approach. I wonder if Recon had his eyes set on something like that with proxy racks even on the front. Decided not to go for that once he saw the horseman coming in and like the TCB in the light, but I wonder if that was the initial plan. Well, plan has gonna arrive for these little horsemen. I know this thing walls are being a little bit problematic for him. Tech up is gonna come through from Ghana. I'll have to see what Recon's choice is. He did move out on the deer, so he could try to rush up himself, but he's switching to farms, so he's definitely gonna be delaying his timing. In the meantime, he has a lot of men at arms in the midfield. But now he's at a big disadvantage because that was a house of learning tech up. There is a tower victory, which means that Garnaf will have the superior MAA. At least for the time being. I think the concern will be over time. Oh yeah, he's going crossbows. He's not going to mm -hmm. go men at arms. Makes a lot of sense because sure thing, you're going to have own blades, even tower victory. But once Castle comes in for the men at arms of the HRE, they will have the maces, which should still yeah. give them the advantage. That's a fair point. And and the, the issue is like home blades make sense for the Lancers long term, but if you try to leverage the timing with how long it takes you to research it, you're up against an HRE opponent. They could easily tech up within a minute of seeing you do it. But because you teched up so fast, this is the edge that Garnaf will get. So the relics. He loved his wall of lols, but so far he hasn't noticed he can go for one. In fact, he's totally forgotten about this scholar. <laughs> Garneth went up to five scouts actually to yoink the deer away from his opponent. Look at how cheeky he's flying this. This is just one, but he's got five scouts working. Three gone. Oh, Ooh. this is going to be tight. Just about gets out of range. Now he can go in and clean up the scholar, but yeah. I, I wonder if he's going to do this. This used to be uh, someone I'd see frequently out of another 3D member, the, <laughs> the scout play with the Delhi. Makes a lot of sense when you consider how far away all the deer stacks are on a map like Basin. It makes a lot of sense if you consider that, as you said, Recon is going to chew his way through that boar rather fast. And then what does he have left inside his base to take as a food source? Well, excluding those berries and a couple of farms set up. But yeah, you could actually make life a little bit more difficult for Recon if you take away those sheep carcasses or um, deer carcasses, rather. Man, actually, like, it, it fits even better than the whole idea of Pro Scouts. I still remember one of the first games I watched on Basin. It was a 2v2. I think it had Salami and Grubby in it. And uh, I remember him just basically going pro scouts and feeding the war machine that was grubby in the HRE. Shout out to the show matches. I missed those. They were good. <laughs> Crossbow's out now for Garnet. He also has some Lancers to work with. So for the time being, Recon's going to get pinned inside his base. But he still has 16 men at arms standing. And now he's on the way to Costellage himself. Do keep in mind, he also has a decent eco lead of almost 20. In fact, more than 20. Mm-hmm. Feeling pretty healthy considering that extra Gavin rate he's got. Only one product so far though. Wall on the side. Good luck with that. Even with party, he didn't notice it quick enough. So the three main arms will take him out. And this breach, I mean, it, it's not fast coming, right? Because he's relying on crossbows. He can't get through these pitiful walls, which is going to buy enough time for Recon to get a clean tech up. Yeah, now Recon is a little low on gold. So adding Lunsknecht there is going to be a challenge. But seeing how many crossbows you have for Garneth, that's the obvious choice for Recon. He could kind of start with some Spearman because he's also facing some Cavalry, but at one point he's going to need an answer to those crossbows. Rough part for Recon is the lack of relics he's going to have access to here. There's another one is going to get yoinked away. So Recon will only <laughs> maybe be able to get two relics, if that, because he came back for the safe one. So one relic is all that Recon will get in this game as an HRE player. Yeah, that's sad at the best. Garnet is going to yoink most of the relics, and that should offset the eco difference between the two players, or the villager difference there is. The passive gold income is going to be more than sufficient to compensate for a lower villager count. The military academy is also being researched by Garnath, so he wants the ability to mass as fast as possible here. Questions on whether his eco will be able to support that long term, right? Because I don't think... Has, has he actually switched into farms fully yet? I don't think he has, right? Yeah, I don't think so either. I think he's still taking the deer that he ferried in. <laughs> Yeah, that, so that, that's going to dry up at some point. So it might be difficult. It might be a bit ambitious for him to think that he can actually max out using Military Academy quickly here. Raiden. Uh-oh. 
problematic. Recon not reacting straight away, so villages are going to be in a bit of a pickle here. He needs to get the army out to defend, but the problem is he only has 11 men at arms, so can't combat this many crossbows as it stands. Yeah, well, look at that. Two fortified towers plus the town center. Emergency repairs also available. Spring Oldham placement's not there yet on the towers, but once they are there, this might be a hold that Recon can maintain. And they're cheaper. That's the other beautiful thing because the HRE, 25% off on all these upgrades. TC is being torched, but remember, E-Repairs hasn't been hit yet. It's going to offset all this damage. The damage does feel pretty limited at this stage. Yeah, there it is. Scholar is doing good work healing, though, so the army is not really getting picked apart. So as much as emergency repairs will help, it's not going to keep this thing alive altogether. You see, it's just not up, but the army is not getting smaller. In fact, it's getting larger. Small efficiency being there. Recon waited until it went on fire, so it took a little bit of additional damage. Uh, remember, it heals 2,000 HP, so 2,500 HP or 2,400 HP rather. You can kind of hit it before it even goes on fire, and uh, it's a little bit more efficient. But things that are on fire that you can't protect, those outposts that you just upgraded. Sure, they take the reduced torch damage, but as you mentioned, Garnaf can stand here indefinitely. I love what Garnaf just did. He, in fact, intentionally started targeting the town center first, because he wanted Raycon to use the emergency repairs on it. That means that the moment emergency repairs is popped, he's going to shift focus towards the towers and take them down. And the towers are the big deal there because those can have the springles on them. The town center fire has minimal impact on this battle right now. So you want to take down those towers first. And for that, you need to bait out emergency repairs on the DC first. Now there's one way Recon feels he can redeem this fight. One way he can turn it around. It's a combination attack. Langsnecht and Mangonels. That could clutch it up. He's going to need the Langsnake mainly for the Scholars and of course the Mangoes to keep the crossbows at bay. He also still needs a lot more time to build up enough to hold. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Like, you're looking at 29 army against 74. That is a massive discrepancy. And so many Lancers for Garner that he can just dive in, completely avoid the entire army of Recon and just massacre the Eco. It's not just that it's 74, 76 now actually in fact. It's more than that, right? Like, usually when we talk about Delhi armies at this stage, it's crap tier units, you know, spears, archers. Everything here is, is tier three, other than the three yes. horsemen, right, and the scouts. It's mass knights and mass crossbows. And look at the amount of scholars, even. Crazy healing potential with 21 scholars on the field. A lot of armor piercing power to deal with the men at arms that Recon has with the crossbows. But the big oh. deal is the 23 premium knights, something that Recon has basically no answer to. Big deal. Big problem right now is that this one's not going to last long enough to get the manga out, I don't think. It's going to be a little bit tight here. Maybe gets it out, but how are you going to protect against the flood through? Right now, it's a pitiful amount of spears out from Recon. Mango shot comes in. That's going to be an instant target. You see the Lancers switch over and chase in. Needs to body block this. He's going to lose the premium unit straight away. Second Mango does come out. In the choke point, he will commit though. And Garnaf should be able to clean up the siege with little to no resistance due to the lack of spears that Recon has. Yeah, Lancer's oh, lovely snipe on the Mangonol. Oh, Scholar's not through healing, though. Look at the Lagsnecker. That's why the Lagsnecker in. Five Lagsnecker inside on top of the crossbows. And the crossbows still getting hit by the Mangos. Scholar's as well. Sure, the Lancer's will clean house. But on the backside, you're going to lose a lot of troops to the remaining melee force of Recon. Yeah, this choke point is not favoring Garnet at all. Lancer, they are oh. just viping his army out here. Still, numbers seem sufficient. Garnet still standing at 60 oh plus God. army. Recon at none. It's absurd. He kills the first layer of scholars, but they're like a zombie apocalypse. There's just more where that came from. And unlike zombies, these guys don't degen, they regen. In fact, I'm surprised Garnet is pulling back right now. He could stop that keep as it is. It's desperation for Recon right now, trying to rush up that keep. Garnet decides not to dive in, just try to snipe the production instead. You really have to wonder what that keep's going to protect. Sure, it will protect a few of the farms. Siege Workshop as well. But the, the problem right now is Recon is heavily burdened by pocket ecos. That's the only way he's staying alive. Yes. Very patched to the south side. Gold as well. Because remember, he's a small one relic HRE boy. Look at the army count, KP. Four army on the field right now for Recon with limited access to food even. He didn't have a spectacular farming eco set up and he is unable to replenish those lost forces. He's got no standing army right now, whereas for Garnet, he's got 74 units on the battlefield. I mean, we are reaching a point where he could possibly even dive that keep. Remember, there is no boiling oil on it just yet. It's 
especially with the farm still exposed on the side. It's just desperation plays from Recon to try and stay alive. Night count is not looking healthy. In fact, I'm not really sure what the Knights are meant to do. Probably not this. I think he was trying to get them around the side to raid back at home, but they can't even get out of the base as it stands. This one is looking pretty chalk. Sure, the keep can sustain you for a while, but the problem that remains the HRE, these finite resources, they're not protected by the static defense. You have to move out at some point if you want to stay alive. Now look at the healing power coming up here from the Scholars. 17 Scholars on the field for Garneth. He can just keep those Knights alive indefinitely. It's going to push him away because the, the garrison adds in enough damage here, right? This is getting a little bit annoying for Garneth, but ultimately, if he just takes his time and chips the side defenses away, it doesn't matter that he can't dive the primary TC. Recon won't have any resources. He doesn't have to dive that primary TC. In fact, I'm surprised that he did it in the first place is that he could just flank left, and the entire eco of Recon is lying wide open to raid. You see what Recon's trying to do to redeem himself. He's hard on the stone, he's trying to get another keep. This is his only way back in, he knows he basically needs his own little Magano line to stay in this. It's coming too late. It's coming way too late for Red Siege Workshop on the line already for Garneth. He's gonna start popping out trebuchets, and the towers are being burned down in the blink of an eye. No time at all. And that's cutting off the gold source. In fact, it looks like Recon has had to go to the north side of his base to take the wood line. No safe gold, though. That's the, the problematic element, right? Like, all gold is blocked out, and if you're an HRE player who can't get gold, what are you? Yeah, it looks like he snuck out on the right side, so he's gonna have some backup gold to work with. The bigger problem is that his eco is terribly inefficient, KP. It's just absurd. I mean, I think the thing that makes the, the Delhi so problematic in this situation, it's not the heal, right? Because you know, they don't get the hub medicine until later. In fact, the, the HRE get in Castle Age, for example. It's the <laughs> health. 130 yeah. health per Scholar is absurd. Yeah, it's brutal. And now you have all the upgrades kick in. Those upgrades are free. They take a lot of time to research, but once they are finished, it's a really powerful force on the Delhi. We're looking at almost full blacksmith upgrades, owned blades on those Lancers. And on the top of that, you even have the healing power. A race of castles on the right side over here. But Recon, he should not be able to finish his. Uh, knights are moving across. I don't think they've noticed it yet, weirdly enough. The tree line is actually going to bait them around the side, but that is too much. That's a red tide of cavalry coming to butcher you down. Recon is going to have to cancel, move away. Several more villagers going down. All of a sudden, Garnaf now with a clear eco lead. A keep drop right in the face of Recon. And you have to wonder how many hits is he going to take before he stays down? Oh, it's so painful for Recon. He's trying to recover by building up a force of Lancers. But even if he has that, he's still facing not just 31 Lancers from Garnet, but also a bunch of crossbows. His only hope, raiding his way back into the game. But even then, being able to keep his landmarks alive in the long run seems impossible. He repairs is a wondrous thing, Lytical. He'll have to be in this game as well if he wants to stay alive. Rips now starting to come out. Now, Garnap also has banked a Scholar inside, so they're going to produce very fast. Feels like it's a matter of time before Recon could be chalked in this one unless he can kill enough Eco at home. Now, Recon himself just crumbling on the Eco. All the farm is right next to the Arkham Chapel denied, and he's doing his best to raid his way back into the game. But at the end of the day, we're still looking at almost 100 army on the field for Garnet, less than 15 for Recon. Almost nothing left to fight with for him. Yeah, he's going for full Navy Seals if this somehow works out, because it'd have to be the elite, the elite. Nothing less will do. And his base is about to be lessened. TC is going to go down. He repairs. Of course, got nerfed. Not able to repair as frequently as he used to. But that gone. Wait, wait. Oh, whoa, no, no. What? What? Yeah, he forgot Please. it. Okay. I, you can't rebuild that either. The amount yeah. of wood that would take you, you, you don't have that much wood. And you no longer have emergency repairs. With the town center gone, you can't e-repair your buildings anymore. I really feel like at this point, Recon doesn't even care because he knows that even emergency repairs is just buying him time and that by itself is insufficient. All he can hope for is that those raids will somehow buy him time, but that seems like a long shot. If he saw all the things we see right now, he would just tap out immediately. Maybe he's just one of those 1% player logics. He's like, well, if he gets pop capped, he can't get stronger, right? Right? I mean, uh, I feel like 1% of a chance for him is an exaggeration here at this point. 
you just see no recovery arts for him. His second landmark about to get sniped, and the only thing that's somehow keeping him alive still is this one keep in the middle of his base that's now being trapped down. I don't think he's alive is hope. Maybe Garnaf's internet cuts out, or a dog munches through his ethernet cable. Or maybe, I don't know, me living on top of my mountain, taking a whiz this morning, the water eventually reached his motherboard and, and short-circuited it. Yep, I brought that joke back around. I, that's the only way this is turned around. Where is the third landmark at, I'm wondering? The Aachen Chapel is going to be gone in a matter of seconds, so there is only going to be one remaining for Recon. It's, it's all the way at the back. You could possibly oh. even ignore the keep. But you don't here's, have to. Here's the recovery play. Here's the reco Pick up the relic and wall low. All right, it's the road to wall low. If you don't get at least one wall low, are you worthy? He agrees. He doesn't want to. <laughs> he's not worthy. GG. Finally, Garnath does it. Point on the board. Could this be the beginning? Reverse week. A much needed win here for Garnath. Once again, taking the Delhi to a victory over the HRE. Both times we have had an HRE versus Delhi matchup in this set. The Delhi prevailed, and we cannot understate the importance of that initial boar pull with Garnet Scout. And in general, just the inefficiency of that boar spot. Recon went for a second TC, but his plans fell apart by having such an inefficient boar spot, and really getting minimal impact from that second town center. Whereas for Garnet, it was just a slow escalation with the Tower of Victory, rushing Castle, securing the relics, and then just snowballing the game with a massive army. Talk about mostly premium units. He didn't invest much into army in Feudal Age, allowed him to pile up a bunch of resources to just unleash Hell in Cal